hey, there are a lot of great client tools out there and everybody has it set up differently to suit their own workflow. And sometimes these things can be quite tricky to set up. But I personally have been enjoying the way my terminal functions. So hey, let me show you how I have mine set up so that you can take some of these tools and ideas and put them together and forever change the way you use your terminal. I also want to mention that I'm going to be using Homebrew to manage and install all the tools I'm going to be using today. I always have auto completions and highlightings on my system, so I need to quickly install that on my terminal first. Once you've done that, you can now take these lines and copy them and then paste them in your RC file. You could also use the same exact lines that I'm using right here, or you could just paste the ones that you just copied from your terminal. Once you've done that, you can now go ahead and save your RC file and don't forget to source it. Now we can see that the auto completions are working and the syntax are working correctly. So with that out of the way, we can now move on to the next one. Maskly is a terminal app store manager that lets you easily control and manage your apps downloaded from the app store. Because we all know how bad App Store can get, I personally don't want to have to ever open App Store to update anything. To install Mass, we're going to do brew install Mass. I've already had that installed, so I'm not going to do that. Mass has many commands. For example, if we check for Mass list, it shows list of apps and its version downloaded from the App Store. We can also go in and grab some of these app IDs so that we can use it for other commands. So for example, I grabbed one of Neptune's and now I'm going to check for the mass info. So I'm going to paste that ID in and you'll see that it gives us the version of the app free or paid and other information like the OS or the size of the app. Mass outdated will check for any outdated apps. Mass upgrade will install any updates you have downloaded from the app store. This is great because sometimes app store doesn't show the updates and auto updates don't function properly. This helps a lot with Xcode command line tools, if you know what I mean. We could also use mass search followed by the name of the app to search for specific apps. You can download things from the app store using mass purchase. If you want to know more about these, there are more commands you can read on their GitHub page. I just like the fact that I don't have to open the Mac app store because it's just not that great. Fuzzy find your directories with FZF. Search your files effectively in the terminal. This is a must have. For me, the lesser I have to CD, the better. To install FZF, we can run brew install FZF. I also use FD instead of find. And bat is another must have tool. Bat is like cat replacement with colors for your code views. So brew install bat as well. This is what bat does. It gives you a highlight when you cat out a file. And this is really nice, especially if you combine this with FZF. Once you have that installed, we can go back into our RC file and add this line to initialize FZF for use with your shell. Most importantly, don't forget to save, quit, and source it. Then you can check if FZF is properly installed by running FZF. And if it does prompt you something, that means you're good to go. Or you could run FZF dash dash version to check. Going back into our RC file, and if we go down and check our first FZF default command setup, we basically have this first command as the default FZF command. Using FD to search with the hidden flag to show the dot directories. And this flag will make things a little bit cleaner. And we are also going to be excluding the dot git files. The control T command will be set equals to the first command. The third one is the option C or alt C command, which will only search for directories. This line is going to be the default options set for FZF borders and height and colors. And the next one is going to set FZF, especially for Tmux, because FZF and Tmux works a little bit different. Let's take a look at how Control T works. So when I do Control T, it gives me this filter of every single file in my current directory. And then I can start fuzzy searching through that. So I'm just going to jump to the block animation projects that I have and then press enter. And then there you go. Now for option C, when I press option C, I can just jump straight to the directory that I'm searching for instantly. For my use case, sometimes I just do nvim and then type control T and then that will fuzzy find me through every single thing. So let's go to block animation and then enter to get into NeoVim or your editor. You can also do the same thing if you are using VS code. So code control T select the directory you want to go to and press enter and it will jump you there. 
I also have an alias set up for this, so I basically use the alias with the script to allow me to fuzzy find through the history files that I opened with NeoVim and opened me in the editor. Taking a quick look at the script, you can see that we have this function. The first line is going to check for NeoVim old files and grab them. And then the second block will basically just filter the old files we got from NeoVim. And then the third one is just the FCF selection and just some preview that we specifically made for this to work. Next one checks if the files are selected. If they are, they're going to be open in NeoVim. And then lastly, we are just going to invoke the function so that it works in ZSH. Also, if this was the first time you are writing and saving a script, don't forget to execute the script with this shmod command. So let me just go ahead and copy that. And then you can just save, quit, go back to your shell and run that command. Going back to the zrc file, you can see that I have an alias set as nlof and the path is set to the scripts. So it depends on where your script is located. But if you prefer to just write the script in your rc file, you can do that. Taking a quick look at this again, I can nlof, go into the file with neovim and then quit. It is so useful and really handy when you want to quickly edit something and just get out of it. I also have an alias set up for using fuzzy find with uh, man pages. What this alias allows me to do is quickly search through any man pages and open them up. So for example, I can do fman and search for the git man pages and then I can just quickly look through that. I find this really useful when I want to quickly look for some man pages, but of course you can just run the command man git or something like that. Talking about man pages, we also have another tool called the TLDR. This one is very similar to mangit except that it only brings up the key commands that is most commonly used. I use this when I actually want to just quickly get the command and not get into the details of the tools. To install, we can do brew install tlrc, then we can start running TLDR, followed by the tool that you want to run. And this is the GitHub page. You can go ahead and read through that if you want to. This one is really nice to have. It is basically FZF integrated with Git. Let me just show you real quick. So I have that sourced in here into my file, basically from the path of my scripts folder. So this is his GitHub right here, FZF Git. You can go and check out the repo. To use it, I'm basically just going to clone it but I already have it installed on my system, so I'm not going to clone it again. But you can go ahead and run git clone and paste that link in and then clone it to whichever folder or scripts you want to clone into. The only commands I use from this is to check for git branches or remotes or work trees. So going back to our terminal really quickly, now jumping to a project that has a git remote in it, I can press control GB for all the branches, control GR for all the remotes, and then control GW for work trees. Zoxide is similar to CD. It remembers the path you typed in without having to type it out fully. You need to type out the full directory the first time you use Zoxide for it to remember. Now to install Zoxide, we're going to use brew. So brew install Zoxide. Then you need to go to your zshrc file and then add this line to initialize Zoxide. Save it and source the file. Now we can run zoxide followed by the directory you want to go to, press enter and it should jump you there. Pressing z again will just jump you back to home. Now it remembers desktop so I can just type z des. And if you want to go to for example projects, I can do z projects. Now it will remember the projects. So all we have to type is z pro. And it jumps me to projects. You can basically jump anywhere you want using that, even with the directory that is about six to seven levels deep. So like this one, you can see that it's actually seven level deep. Zoxide is based on recency, meaning that it will prioritize the directory you jump to most recently, so it will not clash. I have another script for Zoxide, which allows me to search through every file and open it into new event, and not just history files. If we go and check our RC file, I have an alias set to nzo, which will call the script in my scripts folder. Going back to the script, we can see that our first block here is going to be responsible for checking if there is an argument provided with the nzo command. If there is no argument, it will call fzf using fd with the following options from fzf. 
the second block checks if an argument is provided. So if there are only one match, it will open it directly into NeoVim. But if there are multiple matches, then it will use FZF to filter it out again, and then you can select the one you want to open into NeoVim. So for example, if we run NZO right now and search for the files we want to go to, for example, this one, it will jump me straight into that file. Let's try another one. Let's go to main.jsx. And there we go. You could even take it up to a next level and go set an alias from CD to Zoxide instead. But I personally would like to keep CD and Z separate. Next up is EZA. EZA is like LS on steroids. I use EZA for the sanity of my eyes. This here is just the basic EZA, but we can configure EZA to another level so you can go check their repo if you want to customize it a little bit more. This is how my EZA currently looks. You'll see that I have icons, time and date on the left side of it. So in my RC file, I basically have an alias of LS set to EZA. So if we go to that alias, you can see that we have options in there. So for example, if we take no file size and save and source it, the file size is gone. Let's go back and remove the icons so you can see it more clearly. If we go back into our RC file, we already have EZA piped into FZF. Option C has EZA piped into it. I currently have my EZA set to long, which means that my LS is going to be in the list. But if you change that to a grid, source the file, and you can see that it is now in a grid with those icons. If we quickly take a look at our option C, you'll notice on the right side that our EZA previews are also working in FZF. And of course, we can add the icons to this too. Next, we have the duck. Yahtzee is a terminal file manager built on Rust. I've been trying this out a lot and I do kind of like it. I feel like it's a good thing to have in your terminal. So to install Yahtzee, we are going to still use Homebrew to install it. Running Yahtzee will give us this window using the up and down arrows to navigate in the current directory, left and right to the next and previous directories. Now I'm going to set up some more configurations for Yahtzee by creating a Yahtzee directory in my .config. Now we are going to add the Yahtzee.toml file, the keymaps.toml file, and the themes.toml file. Then we are going to create a flavors directory and download the themes from GitHub into this directory. If you head to the Yahtzee GitHub repo, you can find some of the configurations already preset for you. So I'm just going to copy this key maps. I can see some of the Vim key maps that I kind of need. And we're just going to paste it in our keymaps.toml file. We can now run Yazi to check if the key maps are actually working. So we can use JK to move up and down, L to go into the next directory, and then H to go to the previous directories. Next, we are going to go set the themes. So I'm going to head to the repo, and the themes that I'm going to be using is Capuchin. So we're going to copy that and paste it here. So now we can go to our themes.toml file. And now we can add the flavors configuration in here. So copy that, paste it, and then save it. Now we can run Yahtzee to check if the themes are being applied. And yes, they are. And finally, we are going to be configuring the Yahtzee configuration file. For me, I don't really have anything much to configure for Yahtzee. I'm okay with the default options. So we're going to go ahead and copy it from the GitHub. The only thing I'm going to be changing is to be able to use Yahtzee to open NeoVim from the Yahtzee window itself. By default, it comes with the Vim editor, but I am going to change it to NeoVim. For some reason, there is a bug that doesn't allow the create title to be an array, which is what it comes with by default. I'm guessing the first one is for creating a file and the second one is for creating a directory, but it doesn't work right now, so we can just pick one. Now that it's working, we are going to check out some of the commands that Yahtzee has by default from its configurations. You can also check here if your terminal supports images, but most of them should support it anyways. You can look at images inside Yahtzee. A to add a file, for example, test.js creating a directory by typing slash at the end by to just yank a file and then we can head into a different directory and paste that file inside of it 
D to delete the file to trash, and capital D to permanently delete the file. X to copy cut a file, and P to paste it right back. Forward slash or question mark to start a search, capital J and K to move up and down in the preview window. To open file with an editor, just press enter, colon to run a shell command, and that is pretty much Yahtzee. Alright, so we can't end the video without talking about Tmux. Tmux is a great terminal multiplexer. To install Tmux, we can run brew install Tmux. Taking a quick look at my Tmux configuration, I have a .tmux folder that stores all the plugins, and then a tmux.com to store all the configurations. And these are just the basic configurations. I use control B as prefix. And then we have a rebind for splitting vertically and splitting horizontally. And then we have R set to reload our Tmux configuration with prefix R. Then we have D set to be able to resize panes with Vim motion. We also have this set in order for us to be able to use Vim motions when we go into the selection mode. So for example, if I run man git really quickly and I do prefix V or control BV, I'm able to go inside the documentation and select something. And then of course we have a key bind to run the good old tmux sessionizer script which is a really good script and then i don't even know why i have that but that creates a new session and then of course we have the tpm setup for our tmux plugins so tpm is going to be our tmux plugin manager while we set up tpm don't forget to add that line to the end of your file this runs the tpm config that you clone from github Again, your path may vary depending on where you clone it. And next is basically the cat Poochine theme for Tmux. And we also have the Vim Tmux Navigator, which allows us to use Vim movement in Tmux. And then we also have Tmux Session X. I've been trying it out for a little bit, and I think I quite like this one. Because usually, when you have to switch a Tmux session by doing prefix B and S, you can go up and down to choose the session. So for example, if I want to rename this session to a different name, I have to do prefix and then colon rename and then type the new name in. And to kill a specific session, you'd have to do control X to kill that session. But with session X, I can just hit prefix capital O to open it up and switch between my sessions very easily. I can create a new session by just typing a new name in and then pressing enter. And of course, if you type the same name in, it will not create it for you. And you could also rename a session by pressing Ctrl R and then it will just rename it. The next one is just for the online status on the bottom right and also for the battery. And then we have Tmux Resurrect, which will pretty much just keep our sessions alive when we come back into Tmux. And Tmux Continuum will be the one saving our Tmux session every 15 minutes. And these are just the Catpuchin themes and some extra Tmux setup and colors to make it look nice. And then that's it, you just save the file, run prefix R to reload the config, and then run prefix capital I to load all the plugins, then get out of Tmux, run Tmux kill server to kill all the server, and then start a new session and everything should be good to go. What I really like about Tmux is that it just allows me to really quickly switch between my sessions, especially the ones that I've been working on so I don't have to CD into it that often anymore, and that is pretty much Tmux. As always, I'll have my .files repo link in the description down below so you can go check it out. And if you do end up checking it out and find it somehow useful to you, then don't forget to give it a star. I would really appreciate it. And I'm out.